Okay, this video is from the Triphasic Training Exercise Manual. And what we're covering right now is the hip extension pattern, the correct sequences in which it should happen. Now here's a picture I've taken off the internet through a number of sources. And what you have is the way that energy should transfer through the body. The energy on the right, the pattern is hip extension view, so that if your glutes fire, then all the forces should transpire out through your body into the second and third zones. So for running, the initial movement of the limb should transpire from the glutes to propel the body forward. And then through the hamstrings and then the calves and then through your foot and ankle. The other one on the left is the flexion pattern and the order and sequence which things should take place through flexion. And the main one we're going to talk about here today is the hip extension pattern. The hip extension pattern, here's the correct hip extension pattern. And by saying that, I mean essentially with a majority of our athletes that I've dealt with, this seems to be the one, if you can change it and you can fix it, or if you see an instant decrease in performance for whatever reason, this is the pattern that is incorrect. And in saying that, you can see the glute is marked number one and the hamstring is marked number two. And then the contralateral QL is number three. So this pattern has been paramount in us achieving maximal success with our athletes of any sport in any nature. You can see compensations when they walk if they don't have it. You'll be more upright and erect if you have the right pattern when you are, let's say, walking. So yes, I tell my athletes to use their glutes to propel themselves forward. Now, the order again is the glutes, the hamstring, the contralateral QL. Again, this is the most functional high performance pattern that you can get. What you'll see is flaws, and I'm about to cover those patterns. I also will show a video in this manual on how to correct the glute hip extension firing pattern, or actually test for it. And then we will use some methods to show you to basically fix those patterns in your athletes, sometimes instantly, sometimes over a few short sessions, and not months and months of prehab work. Here is an example of a hamstring dominant hip extension pattern that is wrong. Okay. Now, some may argue, um, going back to this correct pattern that the hamstring and the glute fire at the same time, but we're finding that if we cue the ham, the glute to fire first, then the correct sequence always seems to take place. Now, this is a hamstring dominant pattern where, and notice that the energy, instead of going from the glute out, the actual energy goes from the hamstring, contralateral QL, then to the glute. This is where the energy is coming into the body, why all the forces should be leaving the body, therefore probably causing maybe some future issues in regards to injuries and various problems because the forces and the energy are not going in the correct sequence outside the body to the feet, which actually move the, the person up and down the track, change directions, whatever it may be. Again, this is a hamstring dominant pattern. The hamstring, the contralateral QL, and then the glute are the firing patterns. What you'll see here is many pulled hamstring problems with this pattern. Happens all the time, especially these athletes when they just start to overstride at the end, uh, around 35, uh, 30 yards in a, in a 40, or whenever they're training, they use their hamstring to pull themselves forward. And this is the pattern that you have. The next wrong hip extension firing pattern is one that you will also see is the contralateral QL, the hamstring, then the glute fires. This pattern, many will be able to relate when this transpires in an athlete, and here's a few reasons why. And again, contralateral QL, hamstring, glute pattern. What you'll find then is the athletes will come out of a performance, let's say run a 400, or while they're skating um, in ice hockey, that the lower back is the key to their hip extension firing pattern, and it gets extremely tight. 
Now what you'll find that Ctrl Out QL or the QL will actually cramp up, become tighter. This is locking down the lumbar spine to decrease its mobility and with that lack of mobility you'll have other things, maybe future disc problems and things that will transpire. You'll also have this pattern now I hate to say this but people are going to be upset this pattern will transpire when somebody is taught to brace their abdominals yes when you brace your abdominals and squeeze your core this is the pattern that it often transpires this is why we don't feel overemphasizing uh, the core in any way shape or form should be part of your training for example if you're a baseball pitcher and you brace your core when you pitch it will slow down the speed of your pitch if you're a an sprinter or a football player when you run your 40 why would you brace your core it will slow your 40 down so then why would you brace when you are training you should just use the right cues to cause the right pattern and everything will turn on and off as it should especially in healthy people I repeat especially in healthy people not rehabbed people not old people that are getting off couches as many of the studies have been done so the bracing can cause this dysfunctional pattern example with that QL also shrinking is that you'll have athletes that many of my professionals might come back and if they do too much bracing or do a lot of core work during the year that let's say might be incorrect they will actually cause that QL to lock down lumbar locks up and then it'll actually draw the very first rib down to the hip bone I prefer three and a half to four fingers in between the hip bone and first rib of my athletes they'll leave here like that and then if they do a ton of core training during the year and, and a lot of bracing and if they do training during the year uh, in the weight room what will transpire is that that bottom rib will get pulled sometimes even into the hip bone and now you're set up to have a number of problems throughout your training and your career I want you to test the correct firing pattern and I'm going to facilitate this with something that we do in all of our exercises when it deals with hip extension I want you to basically do an RDL as an example so you don't even need a bar you can just pretend you have a bar in your hands now you're going to do it the wrong way at first the wrong way is I want you to do an RDL just go up and down see how it feels a few times and hold your big toe point it to the ceiling the whole time okay and once you do that RDL you'll you'll get a sense of, of how the RDL feels I want you to remember how it feels now I want you to do it the correct way in our opinion to get the glute firing sequencing pattern correct you go down at the bottom you actually pull keep your toe up while you go down and then when you get to the bottom and you go to reverse the bar you actually squeeze your curl your toe into the ground and then do the RDL right after that and you will find that the glute fires extremely hard you can't stop it there's nothing you can do but what we're telling you is that that is the sequence of how we do our exercises for example in the RDL your toes up on the way down and then when you go to reverse the bar in the RDL you'll lift the bar up and squeeze your glute and what happens is the glute turns on in the correct to start the correct sequencing of hip extension look we do this in the bench in the bench I have found that all my athletes if you squeeze your toe and your butt when you go to reverse the bar the bar moves faster a hundred percent of the time in all athletes now if your butt comes off the bench a little bit look I'm not training athletes to be power lifters I'm training them to be high performance high velocity athletes so I prefer them not to bring their butt off the bar or off the bench when they do this but if it comes off a little I'm not upset the same thing in the squat even try the lat pull down let's for example in the lat pull down brace your core and do a lat pull down with a weight as soon as you're done do another rep push your hips into the machine 
by firing your glutes first and then pull the bar. Everyone I've ever checked pulls the bar faster, harder, and they claim it feels lighter. Again, the bracing is the issue in many of these cases. Now, the single leg squat, we do ours a little different than most, and or the step up, they essentially look the same. They're essentially vertical forces. So we go straight up and down. But if you want to check this on a step up, let's do a low box step up or where you can get in a good position so that when you do the step up, you're not pulling yourself forward. Your, your foot is below your butt uh, when you do the step up. Now, I want you to focus on using your quad to do the step up. Try that one time. And then the next time, you fire your glute first to do the step up and see what you feel lighter with. Add weight. See what you feel lighter with. Um, again, I've already talked about the pull down, but let me give you some ideas and reasons why this works. So, for example, when my athletes are doing very reactive stuff or light loads, guess what? When we do squats and single leg squats or step ups, let's say anything that has reactiveness in it, like plyometrics, their quads don't hurt. Their butt is the thing that gets sore. So if you have soreness in your lower back, in your quads, even maybe your hamstrings when you do plyometrics, guess what? You have the wrong pattern. For example, last year I had a professional athlete come to me, had a disc surgery. I spotted the disc surgery on TV watching this athlete perform. Knew he had the wrong pattern. Then texted him, long story short, didn't get the treatment, didn't fix the pattern, and then had to have surgery later. He goes to rehab, and all they had him do during every exercise was brace the core. So the athlete left me with one finger between the rib and the hip bone and came back after the rehab by bracing with the rib inside the hip bone. And eventually I had to get that rib out, and it's very painful eventually. A lot of soft tissue work in the right areas to basically expand that tissue from collapsing. This athlete was six foot five and I had to expand his ribs roughly about two inches or the tissue between his hip bone and his ribs two inches. So here's the big thing with the rehab. Many times people will find in rehab that I find all these rehab exercises to get the glutes to fire and activate are not correct. When I say that, they are, the athlete has the wrong pattern, they do the wrong rehab, not the wrong rehab, but they use the exercises that do not fix this pattern. So what are they doing? They are basically instilling and re-emphasizing the wrong patterns. You need to fix these first, these patterns by cueing and or very soft tissue methods that we use to make sure these patterns are corrected and you're not ingraining the bad patterns into the particular athletes um, basically everyday movements again other reasons it, we found that these patterns exist this um, SI joint dysfunction the second you have this this pattern can change that's why you need chiropractors and, and PTs the other thing we found is that the breathing pattern we use, I know there's a number of breathing methods out there, but the one that seems to basically work is a belly breathing pattern, a simple belly breathing pattern, the correct way in all forms. This is the one we've tested and tried. And essentially what happens is if you're, you're, you have a sympathetic breath, the diaphragm is sympathetic. The diaphragm is basically tied to the psoas through tissue. And then the psoas becomes sympathetic and tight. And then what transpires when you have the antagonist of that, so the psoas is tight, the glute downregulates itself. So breathing patterns are also important. And then what we've also found that ankle problems are a big contributor to this pattern, which will be in another video in this exercise manual. Again, we use cueing to make sure that they use the right patterns. Um, the activation sport is the very soft tissue stuff. Um, and it's really can be form, perform, performed by the athlete on their own or a coach. But please feel free to visit that website.